Now, as the COVID-19 is spreading in the U.S., so are xenophobic sentiments, unfortunately. Like in many other countries, Asian groups, especially the Chinese community, have been harassed, intimidated, and even discriminated against amid the pandemic. Many Chinese Americans are speaking out against racism. Others are saying that Trump's rhetoric fueled xenophobia. To talk about it, I want to bring in two members of the Chinese American community in the U.S. From Los Angeles, we have Michael John, a Chinese American attorney from his own law firm, and in Los Angeles. And joining us from Boston studio is Jason Chen, attorney with Seed Chen and Associates, a law firm based in Boston, Massachusetts. And gentlemen, welcome to our program. Jason, I want to start with you. We've seen disturbing videos and reports. Um, a woman wearing a mask was assaulted at the New York uh, City Metro. A teenage boy in Los Angeles so was beaten by bullies who accused him of, quote unquote, having coronavirus. And how bad is the situation from where you are? Uh, have you yourself encountered racism of any sort since the start of the outbreak? We're definitely seeing more of it in um, the communities, at least anecdotally, we're seeing more and more people being engaged and having different people say different things towards them. Um, it's quite unfortunate in terms of the incidents that are happening throughout the United States. And we are obviously concerned that um, the increase of numbers will go up as the fear of the coronavirus goes by and obviously the president's rhetoric to incite these types of incidents all across the United States. I mean, racism is not a, um, a surprise. I mean, we have seen uh, decades, if not longer, of uh, racism in this country, right? From the railway workers of the Chinese American community all the way to the yellow peril uh, accusations to the law banning Chinese citizens to Chinese uh, immigrants to becoming American citizens. Um, does any of the racism and xenophobia uh, since the outbreak of the coronavirus come as a surprise to you at all? No, I mean, the United States has always been dealing with it for, for many years. Uh, it goes back to a long history of it. Um, in terms of the coronavirus itself, it seems like the Asian community is more of a target at this point. Um, but you know, in recent years, there's certainly been a lot of uh, shootings of African Americans that are still in the news. Uh, it's still an ongoing issue. It's been a, an issue for many, many years. Uh, in terms of what the coronavirus has done is essentially shifted the attention to another population. Uh, in terms of uh, the president calling this a, a Chinese virus um, and certainly not um, denouncing racism to its fullest extent, essentially allowing people to um, and almost encouraging individuals to act on their worst ideas and thoughts. Um, and that's kind of what we're seeing with the coronavirus itself. But certainly it's not a new issue. It hasn't started with this particular president. It's always been an issue that people in the United States have dealt with. Uh, but I think it certainly brings upon um, a light in terms of the racism when it comes to Chinese Americans, but also all Asian Americans in general. So that's what we're seeing now. Right. And Michael, I want to go to you. Uh, we've seen disturbing images of a father and his son suffering major cuts to their face from unknown attackers who called them out for spreading the virus. Um, the family turned out to be Thai, not Chinese, and so we decided not to show the footages because they are really graphic. Uh, Michael, I heard that um, some Asian Americans are hoarding guns, weapons, to protect themselves. Is that true? What needs to be done, really, to stop these uh, racist uh, hate crimes? Yes, recently we have received uh, more and more inquiries uh, from Chinese Americans and even Asian Americans in the Chinese community or in Asian community asking, uh, you know, what's the procedure to uh, purchase and uh, how to get uh, gun training. Uh, uh, you probably know that <clears throat> most of the uh, uh, gun shops are running out of guns. Uh, you know, the earliest, uh, if you make a, a you know, purchase, you're probably not going to see uh, your purchase arriving maybe uh, three, four, five months later. So yes, uh, not only the Chinese and Asian Americans are buying guns, uh, I, I would have to say that general public, uh, out of fear of coronavirus and, and who knows what's going to uh, spread uh, into the future, uh, a lot of people are buying guns and you know, basically gun shops are running out of guns. But Jason, you're a lawyer, um, so is my. Uh, sorry, Michael, you're a lawyer, so is Jason. Um, yeah. I want to ask you, Michael, uh, first. Uh, in face of racism and stigma, um, and even physical attacks, do you think hoarding guns is the best way to protect themselves? Really, what 
are the best ways? Uh, what legal means can they, uh, can they employ to better protect themselves? I'm talking about the Chinese and Asian communities who are targeted. Yeah, well, it's a, it's like a permanent uh, topic, right? I mean, Wang Guan, you lived in the U.S. for a while, and you know whether to have a gun and not to have a gun. There's it's a constant uh, debate in the United States. Uh, sure. My personal opinion is, you know, gun comes with protection and responsibility. So, you know, if, if you are not very uh, familiar with the guns, I mean, you you, sh you probably should get enough training before you get the gun, and you know. Uh, every year in the United States, a lot of people uh, were killed not by other people, but that by their own guns. Uh, so, so you know, gun safety is very, very important uh, in this country. But you know, the, the um, discrimination and the fear in the Chinese and Asian community, especially after the spread of coronavirus uh, in the U.S., are real. So, uh, and people are, are truly uh, frightened. Uh, because of the incidents and because of the uncertainty and, and unknown uh, future of this spread. So, so I don't blame the community. I don't blame the people for trying to get guns to protect themselves. And, and you know, people are still having good memories of, of things that happened uh, many, many years ago during the L.A. riot and, and or uh, during Katrina, uh, you know, uh, period, a lot of uh, looting and a lot of you know, the killing and a lot of injury uh, uh, in the, especially in the minority community. So, so you know, whether you have a gun or not, it's a personal choice. But I think the gun mm -hmm. comes with responsibility and protection. Uh, definitely, definitely. Um, uh, Jason, I want to go to you. Uh, talking about insecurity and uh, racism, I want to quote a Twitter user, Eugene Gu, said recently on Twitter uh, that as an Asian American, I don't feel safe mm -hmm. under Trump by repeatedly calling the virus the Chinese virus is scapegoating people like me and my family as well as millions of others like us who have long suffered racism in this country in silence now it will be truly hell um, apart from the Chinese virus um, designation we have also heard uh, the White House officials calling this the Kong flu, the Wuhan virus um, what do you feel about all this? To what extent is the White House responsible? I think um, it is a huge concern it, with the, with the um, information that's coming out of the White House, not denouncing racism is always a, a big issue. The policy has to come from up top to make everyone feel safe and essentially reduce fear in the community. And where you have here that you have the numbers of coronavirus going up in terms of the increased testing, uh, it's certainly creating even more fear in the community. So the White House has to come out not to say, not to only stop using um, words such as you know, the Chinese virus, uh, but it also needs to come out with and denounce racism and also come out with a plan in terms of helping local communities in terms of how to keep everyone safe. And that is the most important thing at this point, is how to keep everyone safe and how to uh, get everyone to work together towards the ultimate goal, which is to try to keep our population healthy and uh, try to get over this epidemic the best way we can. So any type of statements coming from the White House calling it the Chinese virus or essentially scapegoating a population does very little in terms of helping any of us. So I hope that the uh, White House will start uh, using uh, different policies and start using um, different language in terms of describing the situation to really reduce the fear and have everyone start working together as soon as possible. Right, even the director of the Centers for Disease Control and Health uh, and uh, Prevention in the U.S., uh, also some other U.S. officials such as uh, Human Services Secretary Alex Azar uh, said that it is inappropriate and inaccurate to call the coronavirus the Chinese virus and uh, they also said that ethnicity is not what causes the novel coronavirus. Uh, a remark uh, echoed by WHO officials as well as many health ex experts around the world um, Michael, I want to go to you. I want to shift gears a little bit and talk about how the Asian American and the Chinese American can really rise up and, uh, you know, uh, collectively protect themselves and their rights. Uh, what would be your advice as to uh, community organization, um, you know, uh, mass appeals? Uh, what can they do as a collective whole to really protect themselves in the wake of racism? 
Yeah, well, first of all, I think uh, they need to be very strong and very, very firm uh, in terms of fighting racism or any uh, disinformation. And in fact, in Los Angeles, over the past two weeks or so, many community leaders have come out, including politicians, uh, association leaders, and, and just ordinary Asian or Chinese Americans, or even people in uh, in the mainstream community. They're coming out and 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 you know basically denouncing racism and uh, disinformation. Uh, also, secondly, my advice to the Chinese community is to get involved in in the community, which is very I'm very happy and pleased to see that many uh, Chinese Americans. Uh, you know, about two months ago, uh, according to your uh, previous uh, guests, they were help, helping uh, the coronavirus outbreak. Uh, in China, sending masks, money, and a lot of support. Uh, but now, uh, I'm very happy to see many of the community leaders and associations are working to help the mainstream, the uh, uh, Amer- American hospitals, uh, nursing homes, uh, and uh, you know, even in grocery stores. And, and I was uh, visiting one of the grocery stores recently, and they're trying to uh, maintain uh, the operation. I also reserve certain time of the day for senior uh, Americans because, you know, relatively uh, they are uh, not very mobile and they cannot buy, uh, you know, certain uh, you know, necessities for their life. And so they reserve certain time, maybe sometime early in the morning, so they can come and, and shop freely. So this kind of things I think are very important, but most importantly uh, to get accurate information and to fight this information uh, in my mind is very important too. Well, Jason, what would be your advice on fighting stigma and xenophobia? Well, I think the most important thing is not to be passive. I think people need to report any type of incidents of racism against them. I think they need to support each other in the community and also support those community leaders who are trying to make a difference. And finally, just to be participate in, in civics. Um, they certainly need to be involved in being counted in the census, to vote. All these things are very important to be part of the process if you want things to change. So I would encourage each person to not to be passive during this a- entire process. See the value of actually participating in your community and politics as a whole, and hopefully it will bring upon a, a greater future and that we can come out of this coronavirus and actually be a stronger community in the future. Hopefully your advice um, from both of you will be heeded by our viewers. I want to thank both of you, Michael John, a Chinese-American attorney based in Los Angeles, and Jason Chen, based in Boston, Massachusetts, with his own law firm, Seed Chen and Associates. Uh, thank you both so very much. And that will do it for this edition of The Point. As always, follow us on Facebook and Twitter using the handle The Point with Alex. Download the CGTN app to watch our show or go to YouTube and look for CGTN The Point. Thank you for watching and one Wednesday in producing.